Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to edit video in Photoshop. Now I know what you're probably thinking if you know about Adobe tools and you're thinking Photoshop? Don't you mean Adobe Premiere Pro? And yes, I do mean Photoshop. Now, why Photoshop? Well, we have these great tools for video editing for video pros called Adobe Premiere Pro CC and After Effects for uh, compositing and animation and speed grade for color correction and all these uh, and audition for your audio. All these great professional level industry standard award winning tools that are great for video professionals. But we also realize that there are a lot of non video professionals out there that may want to use Photoshop to edit video because they already know how to use Photoshop. So Photoshop has been able to actually edit video for a while now. It's amazing whenever I show this feature in front of a live audience, there's so many people that had no idea you can even edit video in Photoshop, let alone how easy it was to do it. So we're gonna be taking a look at editing, Photoshop, or editing video in Photoshop CC. Of course, um, the same features work in Photoshop CS6 as well. Um, that's when it got the new interface and the new easier controls. And so whether you're on CS6 or CC, the video editing feature um, looks pretty much the same. So we're going to take a look at it in the latest version, which is Photoshop CC. Let's dive in. Now I've got Photoshop open here. And the first thing I'm going to do is switch off my traditional Terry White custom workspace. And we're going to go over and take a look at the motion workspace. That's right. There's a workspace already built into Photoshop for working with video or animation. So that brings up the timeline. It will switch any of your panels and tools to the ones that are appropriate for video. And now we're gonna go ahead and bring in our first clip. Now, how you bring in a video is up to you. You can go up to the file menu and open and go find a video. You can click the plus sign here and go find your video. Or you can, if you know where your video is, you can just simply drag and drop right into Photoshop or right into the um, Photoshop icon to open that video up. So there's several ways to do it. Now, once that video is in place, you can play it. There's a play button right here and that will play the video. And believe it or not, we're playing video in Photoshop. Now, whenever I show this, the thing I have to get people over is that it's video. Cause think of what is video. Video is nothing more than hundreds or thousands of stills playing back very quickly. So since Photoshop can edit stills, it's not too far of a stretch that it can also edit video, a bunch of stills together. So think of it that way and you'll, you'll be a lot faster in thinking and getting over your, I don't edit video, but I know how to use Photoshop thing. Um, so here we are, we're in Photoshop. We have a video on the timeline. It also shows up in the layers panel. So it made a little group for it, it put in a layers panel, and now we can go ahead and, and shrink the timeline visually so that we can add more things off to the side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring in three stills to animate after this, because of course we can mix video, we can mix stills, we can mix multiple videos, multiple stills together to create our final project. And yes, we can also add audio. Now if this clip had audio, we'd hear it, but it didn't, so we don't. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our, back to our operating system here. We're just gonna go ahead and grab three stills and we're just gonna drag those right in. Now the first thing uh, it does is prompt me to bring that one in. I'm just gonna go ahead and scale it up a little bit uh, since I know which one that is. And we're just gonna go ahead and place it. Then the next one comes in. I'm gonna move this one over to the right and put that one off to the side over there. Then the next, once I enter, the next one comes in and then I'm just gonna move that one over to the left. So my three, my three images came in onto the timeline as the three next things that will play. However, I don't wanna play them one after another. I kinda of wanna animate them all together. Now keep in mind that these three came in in the video group. I'm gonna go ahead and select them all, put them above the video group, so that now they're on there, each one's on its own layer, of course, and then on its own track inside uh, the timeline. Now that they're on their own tracks, I can go ahead and move them. And so that they're now stacked on top of each other. So now we see all three at the same time when this part of the video is playing. So if I don't do anything else, the video will be kind of boring. Those three stills will just sit there and do nothing. 
but we of course want to animate them. So we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to twirl down each clip. You can do it either from the left hand side or in the clip itself. So starting with the one on the left, I'm going to twirl it down, then the one on the right, and then of course the one in the middle. We're going to twirl each one down. Now that we're at the beginning point of each one, you'll notice that we can animate over time the transformations, the opacity, and the styles. So uh, we're just going to animate transformations. Whenever you want to do something over time, just click the little stopwatch. That will set a keyframe for what's going on with that particular clip right now. So right now, it's just doing it you know, as is. We haven't done anything to it. And we're going to go ahead and adjust it on going forward. But I'm just going to go ahead and set the stopwatch for each one of these. And um, here we'll scroll down our timeline. Or there we go. And now I've set the stopwatch for each one. So it knows each one's going to do something over time. So now I just go to the end of these three clips. Just drag the playhead to the end. And now I can tell it what I want it to look like at the end of each one. So if we go to the uh, one on the left first. I want that one. I'm going to do a free transform, which is um, edit free transform or command T. And I'm going to have this one scale up. So I'm just going to drag it up in uh, place so that it scales over time. All right. That's what I want that one to do. Next, we're going to go to the one on the right. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to say that this one scales up. And again, we can do that over time. And uh, if we move it in position, it will also happen in position as well. So we can move it up or down, whatever we want it to do. And then last but not least, we want it to do something different on the one in the center. Now the one in the center, I oh, let's go ahead and enter that uh, one on the right there. The one in the center, I want that one to scale down. And as a matter of fact, now that I'm looking at it, it should probably be on top. So I'm just going to move its layer up, and now on top, I'm going to have that one scale down. So I uh, hit Command T to do free transform, Command Zero so that I can see the handles. That would be Control T on Windows, Control T, Control Zero on Windows, and so now we're just going to have that one scale down over time to uh, fit back in its place. So if we jump back over here in our time, oh, enter. If we jump back over here in our timeline it hit play, this is what we've done. We've animated all three to scale the two on the left or the two on the sides, scale up, and the one in the center scales down. Now don't be alarmed by um, you know slow or you know performance issues when you're playing back in, in Photoshop. The actual rendered video will play back at full speed, no drop frames, so forth and so on. So uh, we've done our, our playback here, we've tested it, Looks great. We can twirl these back up so that they don't take up so much room on the timeline. And now we're just going to go to the end and we're going to bring in our next thing. What's our next thing? Our next thing is another video. So that's the whole point. We can edit stills. We can edit videos together uh, anytime we want. So we can just go ahead and drag that new video right on top. And I can see that the original video was 1080p. This one looks like it's 720p, it's smaller. So while we're at it, we can just go ahead, hold down our shift key and scale it up proportionally to fill in that space. And I know you're taught never to scale things up, but in this case, it'll be okay. So now we've got our video in place. If we go look at it, what it is is this girl walking down the hill. Now, if we play it back, here's what it sounds like. So there's a couple of, there's like three things I want to do here. First of all, I don't care about the part of her walking behind that pole and behind that tree. Don't need any of that. I'd really like it to start right about here, maybe. So what I can do is I don't need the entire clip. And that's the whole point with video editing. You can do video edits. So I can either cut it right here with the scissors, split at playhead command, or I can just simply non-destructively bring it back just by um, dragging one end of the clip. I can trim it to the area that I want. So I want it to be right there and then I can just move it back in place. So I can have that one now start like this. 
So we'll jump from there to the girl walking down the hill. Okay, so now we've got our clip in place. The next thing we wanna do is apply an effect to it. Not because we have to, but because we can. So we can apply any of our filters just about to video, just like you would to a still. So um, the first thing I would have you do normally is go up to the filter menu and convert for smart filters. That way when you apply a filter, it would apply it to the entire clip. However, since we dragged and dropped this one into an existing one, it already made it a smart object, so we don't have to do that step. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll go to our filters, pick any one you want, blur it, tilt shift blur, anything you want. But in this case, I'm gonna go old school. I'm gonna go all the way back to, I don't know, Photoshop 3, Photoshop 4, and do find edges. And that will kind of make it look like a sketch. But because it's a video, it's actually sketching it over time. Pretty cool to be able to do that. So we trimmed our video, we applied a special effect to it. And the last thing we want to do is get rid of the walking sound because we're going to put music behind this and we don't want it to be silent music, silent music, then scratchy walking over the music. So if we want to do that, since this is a smart object, we're going to double click on the smart object. And then once we're into the actual video itself, right here on the end of the timeline is a little triangle. And we're just going to go ahead and click that triangle to bring it up and go to our audio tab. And we're just going to bring the audio all the way down. Or we could just simply say mute audio, either one. Um, but either one you want, will, as long as the audio is silent, I don't care which one you do. All right, so now that we've done that, we can close this particular clip we opened up as a smart object. That will save the changes and take us right, yes, we want to save the changes, and that will take us right back to this one, which now if we play it, there's no walking sound because we mute it or turn down the audio. All right, so now we want to finish this off with a logo. So how are we going to do this logo? We're going to go ahead and just simply, we can add it to this existing clip or track, I should say. So just click our plus sign, uh, go to our where we were here. Let's see if we can get to it this way. We'll go here. Uh, Photoshop and we're gonna go to video there we go and there's our logo so we're just gonna bring that in now, of course you could have created that logo right now on the spot but rather than have to watch me do it I just did it ahead of time so here's our logo and we want to have a transition between those two so we just go back to our transitions we can do a cross fade and drag and drop right between those clips and now it will do the girl walking and then a cross fade to the logo, pretty sweet. All right, last but not least, on that, we wanna fade it to black at the end. So we'll just do a fade with black, drag that one on the end of that clip, and now it will fade out. So the only thing missing is our music. And guess what? There's an audio track already there, sitting there waiting for you. So it's an audio track specifically for audio. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, click, go grab some music, and we'll just bring that right in. And it knows to put that right on the audio track and therefore we can play. So let's go back. Let's see what it sounds like. By the way, did we lose our crossfade on that one? I think we did. Let's fade with black right on the beginning of that. There we go. All right, now let's play. As you can see in the timeline, the video is longer, or I'm sorry, the audio is longer than my video. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna go to the end of it and trim it down. Just bring it all the way down to the end or near about to the end of our video. We can move that out of the way, there we go. And once we get it down to the end of our video, of course, we don't want it to stop abruptly. So if we play it right now, this is what it sounds like. Stop. Okay, so we don't want that. What we want instead is we're going to just go ahead and just click on that little triangle on the end. And we have a fade in and a fade out. So I can fade it out by how many ever, you know, milliseconds or seconds I want. So we'll put it like a, about a one second fade on that. And now let's play it. And it fades out nicely at the end of our clip. 
And of course we can have it start up um, with a fade as well if it needed one. But I think the audio kind of starts with a nice beat so we don't really need to do that. Okay, so your video, let's say is finished. Of course, you would just rinse and repeat, keep adding more clips, more stills, more animations, more anything you want, apply any filters, effects, mask, anything you want to do to it, and just keep having fun with Photoshop in your video. But once you're done, chances are you're going to want to get your video out of Photoshop onto something like a, you know, a full a finished clip that you can then upload to your favorite sites or share with others. So the way we're going to finish this off is just go up to our file menu. We're going to do export render video. That's what that's for. So we're just going to do render video and using the Adobe media encoder, which is built in, uh, we're just going to tell it what we want to call this. Um, Purelist uh, video. And once we're there, we can tell it what setting we want. So the format's going to be H.264. And the preset, we can do whatever quality we want or whatever preset for whatever social media site we're going to, video sharing or device, whether it be an Android, iOS device, or YouTube, whatever. So I can do YouTube full HD 2997. I would tell it where I want to save it by selecting the folder and then just click render, sit back and let it make my video that I edited completely in Photoshop CC with just simply drag and drop and simple commands to make a video. So you too can be a video editor in Photoshop CC. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time and uh, have fun editing video in Photoshop CC. Take care.